keep right on paying and like it. You get me? Coax him. All right, let's go. says I've got to do rights to sell the wine because I got the license. And I am an American citizen and this, this is, is a free, free country. country. And so what? You gonna fork over the door or not? No, I cannot pay. Okay. But this is a free country. from the liquor control board. Your license has been revoked. Why? <laughs> Search me. I only take orders. I don't know anything more about it than you do. But the complaint stated that you've committed rough and disorderly conduct. In I know place. who's behind all this. No? I know who did it. Yeah? I'm going to tell the police oh, yeah. because I got it the rights. Yeah. I'm an American citizen yeah. and this is a free country. Yeah? I got it the rights, I tell you. Yeah. And I'm going to make lots of trouble. Here he comes. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Ascarelli. The bambino wants to say hello to you, huh? Oh, no, bambino. Look, Mr. Ascarelli, see you. See. Oh, hello, little bambino. Hello, Mr. Ascarelli. Hello. Say goodbye. Say goodbye, Mr. Ascarelli. Say goodbye. With little baby. Bye, Another small merchant murdered in cold blood. And we haven't got a clue. Yeah, and the newspapers will be taking us for a riot again. Yeah, I know. They'll all be saying, what's the matter with the police department? Why don't the police do something? If I could get my hands on the man that murdered Escarell, I... Look. I give up. Well, what in thunderation? I can't get him off. Just what's the bright idea? Well, it was not my idea, and the guy who had it wasn't very bright. One of your smart coppers didn't like a story I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, take them off, will you? No, I like you that way. All reporters should wear handcuffs, then they couldn't write stories panning the police department. Oh, be a good guy, <laughs> Inspector. I've got to get back to the office and write up that Escarell murder. Okay. But if you put me on the pan, they go back on. Have you any idea who's behind the murder? Sure I have. So have you. Trouble is to prove it. Yeah, I know who you mean. That guy certainly can keep his neck pulled in. Mm. He's the duck. man by the name of Gleason wants to see you, Inspector. Send him in. Speak of the boogeyman, and he's announced. Hello, Matson. I'd like to speak to you a moment. Alone. <laughs> he's practically alone now, but I'll go. Wait a minute. You're a reporter, aren't you? I knew I should have put on a clean shirt this morning. Yeah, I'm a reporter. I'm Tim Gleason. Yeah, I know. I wrote a story about you once when... When you were on trial for wholesale bootlegging, Gleason. You mean when a jury acquitted me of the charges you trumped up against me. That brings us right to the point, Matson. As president of the United Wholesale Liquor Dealers Protective Association, I want to protest against the way you've been hounding our organizers. Your strong arm men, you mean? You won't change your policy? No. You won't listen to reason? No. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. That's the way I feel about it. I think I'll send you a book. I know the answer to that one. I've got a book. Sure you have. It's called Official Regulations and Drill Practice, Police Department. I'm going to send you another by Emily Post. Meaning what? Your manners need touching up, my friend. This Gleason is a very sensitive guy, especially about his past. Maybe I'm wrong, but I always figure it isn't good etiquette to discuss spots with a whitewashed leopard. That is, unless you're a tiger. You want to hear me roar? Joe Eldridge of the Liquor Control Board's coming here tonight. He's got all the records on the Escarell case. 
and he's bringing in a witness who he says has got the lowdown on the whole liquor situation. We're going right to the bottom of it. You want a ringside seat? I'll sit in the gallery. I don't want any racketeers landing in my lap. <laughs> no, no, do oh, you... hey. Yes, ma'am. You still here? Don't look now. I'm not here. I'm over there. Huh? <laughs> you never can tell, can you? <laughs> Why well, pick this office to haunt? Because when I quit my job in Northville, I swore I was going to land a job on the largest newspaper in the city. This is it, so here I am. Won't you get me in to see the city editor? I'm sorry, but I already told you. Blaine just won't hire a girl reporter. Why not? Because he hired one once and she married him. Then they tipped and she hooked him for alimony. Now he never knows when he'll wake up in jail for failure to come across. Don't worry, I don't want to marry a city editor. You're smart there, he's no bargain. Well, wish you luck. Thanks. One thing I'll say about you, sister, you're the stubbornest white woman I ever met. Hello. Yes, sir, I'll be right in. Hi, Mr. Blaine. Well, what have you got, Casey? Something on the liquor racket. Swell. What is it? A guy by the name of Esquirel was killed. Oh, I know that, but who did it? I don't know. You don't know? Right under our noses, they're running a liquor racket that makes prohibition gangsters look like pikers. People are murdered, little dealers are squeezed out of business, and I, who have a nose can't afford it, am forced to pay 25% extra for my booze. And what are my reporters doing? A guy is killed. I ask a simple little question. I say, who did it? And what's the answer? I don't know. That's right. I'm just a reporter, not a fortune teller. That's insolent. I'd can you, but your successor would be just as bad. Uh, would you let me have 10 bucks until tomorrow? Oh, Casey, my heart goes out to you. You're young and unsophisticated. Dumb is the word. Just the type that will be grabbed off by some dame and hauled up to the altar. And then what follow? Babies. Oh, no. No, not babies. That's old-fashioned. Along comes a lawyer, and the dame that swore to love and obey you spears you for alimony. And then you're like me, bled white, grouping your way through life. Uh, friend of yours? Huh? Pretty lady, I asked, is she a friend of yours? Oh, I haven't found out yet. I'm Ruth Nolan, Mr. Blaine. I came here... I'm delighted to know you. I came here to get a job. I take it back. Oh. I don't hire female reporters. I mean, I don't hire female. There's no such thing as a female reporter. Why? 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 Quit heckling me. I just don't hire females, that's all. Won't you even give me a chance? Oh, lady, you're beautiful. When you smile, I suspect you have dimples. I'll bet you'd look swell in a sable coat. I'd do anything for you, up to and including buying you a dinner and two dry martinis. But there, I draw the line. Now, I won't give you a chance. Give my regards to folks in Northville. Isn't there anything I can do to get a job with you? Yeah, go out and buy the dog. Very well, then. Thanks, anyway, for the privilege of meeting two such kindly and courteous gentlemen. Casey, did anyone ever tell you you're a heel? Yeah, but you're the... Sure, I'm a heel. I'm city editor of the sheet, and I've got to be a heel. But there's no reason for you being a heel. I'm working up for a promotion.
He's almost a half hour late. Probably lost his nerve. Yeah, nothing like that. Yes? What? Where? Are you certain? Yes. I see. Everidge is dead. Murdered? No. His car was knocked into the bay in a smash-up with a truck. Well, look who's here. Say, what are you doing around here? I'm working for you from now on. And who started that rumor? I did. I've got a story on the Eldridge murder that'll make page one with a barrel a foot high. Eldridge murder? Yes, murder. He wasn't killed accidentally. I saw it happen. A truck... Well, go on, go on, go on. What'd you see? You gotta promise me a job first. Oh, I'll promise you anything. Only go on. What happened? Well, I'll start from the first. I went to Mr. Eldridge's home, hoping to get an interview with him and then sell it to you. Just as I got there, he drove off and I... And the truck drove away before I could get the license number. That's enough. Because he'll write the story. Sign Miss Nolan's name to it. Martin! Martin! Somebody dig up Martin. We got a replay. Give me the printing department. Give me Cassidy. Boy, boy, where's that copy boy? Don't I get the job? Yes. Get ready for a replay. Can I write the story? No. Snap it up, Casey. Beat it over to Hoffman's. Tell the gang to drop everything and whip over here. Hello, Cassidy. You better get down here. We got a hot one. Can I do anything to help? Yeah. Tell me how to spell assassination. Inspector Matson demoted. Elridge murder cause. Police shakeup follows slaying. Racketeer crime sends veteran officer from command of district. <laughs> well, if this isn't a break, I don't know what is. Eldridge and I were fighting the liquor ring. So they knock him off. And just because it happens in my district, my ears are slapped down. Two strikes with one pitch, huh? Yeah, three strikes on me and out. Out here in the sticks where nothing ever happens. Where happen nothing ever happens. I know that one, too. Remember, worse things can happen to a cop than have a nothing happen. Get me? Now, why should you say a thing like that? You've got ambition, haven't you? You want to get ahead, handle bigger stories, advance yourself? Why should everyone figure that all a policeman does is sit down and wait for his pension? Listen, all I know is police business. I've played it on the level all my life. And what do I get? Whoa! Whoa! Whoopee, I'm a freight train! Run him into the roundhouse. Whoa, I'm still a French chain. Things like that. And street lights out on Hackberry Boulevard. Boys breaking windows in an empty house. Door left unlocked on Adams Street. Dame squawking about a truck motor left idling in front of her house at three in the morning. Two drunks in a doorway. Now, don't tell me a big shot like you is interested in chicken feed like that. Sometimes it takes chicken feed to catch the bird. Oh, yeah? Well, then catch this one. I tell you, I don't want them. And I don't sell no brushes, photo enlargements, radios, or electric flycatchers. I'm from the Anti-Noise Society of America. You reported to the police a truck motor was left running. Why didn't you say so? Come on in. Nothing much. Say, that baby looks like it had a head-on collision with a catastrophe. What of it? Oh, just inquisitive. What's the other guy look like? Like you will if you don't pull your nose in. <laughs> Whose truck is it? I don't know, and I don't care, and I don't want you hanging around here any longer. Is that clear? Perfectly. <laughs> for 10 cents, I'd bust you in the jaw. I can get it done for a nickel across the street. So you won't talk, huh? And there was a truck at the Superior Garage. Let this be a lesson to you. Sift your chicken feed right down to the bottom. Read that last line. Woman got up to investigate and noticed truck was badly smashed in front. May mean nothing, may mean everything. I'll look into it right away. If your hunch is right, I'll love you like a brother. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't make any rash promises. All I want is for you to give me the news break if you arrest anybody. That's a promise. You can be in on it if you want. Come along. Oh, no, I, I gotta get back to the office. Besides, that fellow at the garage has a very quarrelsome disposition. <laughs> Reading your favorite author, huh? How does it feel to be a big shot reporter? I'm afraid neither of us will ever know. <laughs> well, anyway, you know what to do when a fella leaves with his teeth. What's this? It's a camera. Oh, I thought it was your lunch. What? Kimball fell off a trolley car and sprained his ankle. Where is he now? Okay. What a dirty double crosser. I send a reporter to cover a cornerstone laying. I don't ask him to lay the cornerstone, mind you. I just ask him to cover it. And what does he do? He falls off a trolley car and sprains his ankle. Oh, where are the old-time reporters? On the copy desk. Oh, wise guy, eh? Well, just for that, you cover the cornerstone laying, Casey. Uh, I couldn't stand the excitement. And besides, I've got a hot story on the fire. Follow up on the Eldridge case. Quit stalling, Casey. Go on, get on your bicycle. Ten years a reporter and never laid a cornerstone. Now look at me. May I go along? Sure, my bike's standing. No, stay here. But I haven't had an assignment yet. Well, stick around. There's a room where the women's club is going to hold a sewing bee. Bye. You make a better picture when you're scowling. Do you know why I haven't given you an assignment? No. It's because you're so charming. You make the office brighter. I'll take an assignment if you don't mind. I'd like to get acquainted with my staff. Tell me about yourself. Well, there isn't much to tell. Maybe the surroundings aren't right. There should be flowers and soft music. I have it. The press club is giving a masquerade party to pay for a new dining room. Will you go with me? I'll still take the assignment. My, my, it looks as if this has gone pretty far. You got your picture in the paper, didn't you? Hello, Fran. I looked at the calendar this morning, and what do you think? It was Saturday. Something peculiar about this day, I said to myself, and then I remembered. It's the day you get paid. Why don't you try to make an honest living, Fran? Rob pencil peddlers or something. Shall I tell them to dust out a cell for you? No, I'll pay. You ought to pack a gun. Are you sure you can spare that? Oh, quite. Now, that makes only $400 you owe me. Thanks. You know, you two would make a nice father and daughter combination. See you later. <laughs> what were you saying before Mrs. Blaine came in? Oh, yes, you wanted to know about me. Shall I tell you? No. <laughs> Flat on your back, blowing your brains out through that whistling sweet potato. While other women's husbands are out hustling up some dough. Now, don't you worry. I got some dough coming in, baby. Yeah. <coughs> baby is right. I've been wearing rabbit skin so long, I feel like baby bunting. Other women have husbands who buy them real fur coats who's... Well, what do you want, coppers? Yeah, what is this? Now, don't get excited. We just dropped in to say hello. You've said it. Now, scram. Oh, wait a minute. I'm talking to him. You own that truck parked in the Superior Garage, don't you? Well, what if I do? Well, how did it get smashed up? I run into a ferry boat. <laughs> Sense of humor, eh? Well, I've got something on you you won't laugh off, Murties. You've been a tough guy ever since you got out of reform school. You beat every rap. Now, let's see if you can beat a murder rap. Murder? Yes, murder. Our experts have been checking the tire tracks where Eldridge was killed. Those tracks are going to lead you right to the electric chair. It wasn't murder. It was an accident. He didn't have his lights on. He's on the wrong side of the street. Shut up, Joe, you fool. These coppers ain't got nothing on you. They're bluffing. Looks like we won't have to check those tracks after all. 
We'll just take him down to headquarters and bluff him some more. You can't take him away! I'm crying with him, you're dirty! What? What? I'll scratch your eyes out! He ain't done nothing! You! You! Hey, man! Oh, For God's sake, let that guy go and come back here and help me with this dame, will you? What? Okay, sure I'll send a man over. And thanks for the tip, Matson. Carson, Blake, Fitzpatrick. You sent him on an assignment. But well, what are you doing? I'm doing the supervisor's story. Every time I need a reporter, they're all out. Or they're writing supervisor stories. Or they're over in beer hall spending expense money on hangovers. Isn't there one reporter in the house? Yes. Guess what? There is a reporter in the house. I'm it. What's the assignment? Uh, well, I suppose you'll do until one comes along. Go on over to the county jail. They're bringing in a suspect in the Eldridge murder for questioning. Casey was telling the truth after all. Hooray! And it's fine when it left. As soon as the reporter comes in, I'll send him down to take over. You do what he says. Oh, all right. And you won't be needing that toy. I'll have a cameraman there. Well, I'll take it anyway. I'll let you know. Hey, you yeah, in? Yeah, okay. Goodbye. Hey, you in? Yeah, deal him out. Here we go. Have they brought the murder suspect in yet? No, Manson's bringing him. And they got Manson way out in the sticks where all the cops have to do is keep the Indians on the reservation. <laughs> and you're new, aren't you? Mm -hmm. What paper? The Star. I'm Ruth Nolan. Oh, yeah. You got that story about Eldridge, didn't you? Yes. But <laughs> she didn't write it. How do you know? Listen, sister. Any time a story starts out and the gory fingers of the underworld reach out for another victim, <laughs> Matt Casey wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> you sure oh, told her, were <laughs> Come on, play. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll get a draw first. Sure, your mind's on everything but the game. Every oh, time. don't be so fussy with you, Stooge. Mm -hmm. Hi, Casey. Hi, Hi boy. Hello, oh, Matt. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Anything happened yet? No. You'd just as well go back then. But Mr. Blaine told me to stay here and help. That's all right. I won't need any help. Oh, but it's my first assignment, and, and I want to do something. You got your car outside? Yes, why? I'll tell you what to do. Drive it into the alley behind this building and wait. Why? Shh. I can't explain now. Do as I say. See what you Come can on, see. Oh, yeah. I'll meet you out there pretty soon. Well, yes. Shh. Hurry up before the others catch on. Where'd you send the dame? Out in the alley on a snipe hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Say, we better be getting down there. We'll miss him. Come on, gang. Uh, right when I got a good hand. Uh, Time goes by. You know what I want to taking him away again. Did he confess? Well, sort of. See anything? No. Nothing except a lot of garbage cans. Did you count them? Of course not. You didn't count the garbage cans? 
And you said you wanted to be a reporter. <laughs> what a fool I've been. And how nice and clever you were. But I don't have to point that out to you, do I? You appreciate your own brilliance as it is. Oh, now, don't get sore. Why should I get sore? It was all in fun, wasn't it? I want to make good on the job, and I get my first assignment, and you make a fool out of me by sending me out here where you know very well nothing will happen. Oh, I appreciate the joke. Oh, that's fine. Now, will you give me a ride? Sure. Get in. Don't <laughs> think I haven't a sense of humor. And so you let a girl take a picture of you, and you didn't even have sense enough to take the camera away from her. I didn't have time, I tell you. I had to get out of there before the law snagged me. And anyway, maybe she didn't get the picture. And maybe she did. And if she did, we're all on a spot. I'll get Jaime. Maybe he can head her off. You're too dumb to live, Butch. You knew she was a reporter, and yet... Hello. Jaime, this is Gleason. Ah, quit pouting. It was only a gag. Besides, it was a good thing you were out in that nice safe alley. You might have stepped in front of that bullet. What bullet? The bullet that killed Murtis. So there was a murder. Instead of being able to write the story, I have to tell Blaine that I was sitting out in a nice safe alley when I should have been on the job. How did I know there was going to be a murder? Everybody thought the guy with the camera was from a newspaper. The guy with the camera? Yeah, he was there all the time, but nobody paid any attention to him. And after the shooting, he was gone. So a man with a camera killed Murdy. Mm -hmm. Keep quiet. Well, I, I never thought crooks that get so low they'd stick up a newspaper man. All I got's two bucks and a press badge. We don't want your dough. Get that camera. Now, if you holler for the cops, I'll stop your mouth with a bullet. Oh, well, what do you suppose they wanted with that thing? I haven't the slightest idea. Let's get up to the office. Yeah, let's get out of here. Hey, what did you have on that film? Oh, among other things, a picture of Mr. Blaine. Oh, they'll bring your camera back as soon as they find that out. Why a picture of Blaine? Because I think he's a nice man. At least, I'm sure, a sense of humor doesn't include double-crossing his friends. Oh. And nobody remembers just what the killer looked like. And that's all you have on the yard. Well, that's all there is to it. A guy gets shot, he dies. Killer gets on his bike, escapes. Simple. Yeah, very simple. You haven't got a thing the other papers won't have. Oh, where are the old-time reporters? They always had an angle, something new. What do you know about the murder? Very little. Very little. And where were you? Out in an alley. Out in an alley? Ye gods, what were you doing out in an alley? Oh, just taking a picture of the man who murdered Murties. Huh? Huh? Now, hold everything. Let's be calm. Let's, let's not lose our heads. You say you've got a picture of the man who murdered Murties? Mm-hmm. It was Mr. Casey's idea of a good joke to send me out to wait in an alley. So, to pass the time away, I decided to take a picture of a bird. I didn't get the picture, though, because the man with the camera ran in front of me. So I got a snapshot of him instead. And to think I once refused you a job. Why, you adorable creature, you. So that's why those two thugs held us up and took the camera away from us. You mean the camera? It's stolen? It's what happened. And you, you stand before me unscratched. Not a bullet in you anywhere. You let them steal our camera and didn't fight to the bitter end for your paper? Why, the old-time... Yeah, I know. The old-time reporter would have staggered up here with a stomach full of lead and died just after delivering the camera. But I'm not an old-time reporter. Besides, I didn't know Miss Nolan had the picture. Why didn't you tell him, you little sap? Because I was angry with him for the trick he played on me. Still am. The interests of the paper sacrificed to a woman's spite. Get out. You're canned. Well, very well. Uh... Perhaps I can sell the picture to the bulletin. What picture? Well, the one I took of the murderer. But you said the camera was stolen. It was. But I'd expose the roll of film, so I took it out and put it in my purse. Here, give me that purse. But I'm fired. Who said you were fired, did I? Of course not. Give me that purse. Why, that decrepit, doddering old goat on the bulletin thinks he can get ahead of me, does he? What'll he have? A cut-and-dried story with all the names misspelled. And what will I have? A picture of the murderer. <laughs> Maybe the film spoiled double exposure or something. 
you. Here's the first page proof, boss. Now, before the paper comes out, I want you two to interview Mrs. Murdy's. Get a new angle on the story. Ask her how it feels to be the widow of a rat. Put Zing into it. Make her confess. Confess to what? That's your job. Find out if she's done something. If she has, make her confess to it. And you write it from the woman's standpoint. Make it all gooey. Yeah. Take this camera along with you. You did all right with the last one. Get a picture of her with her blue-eyed baby. What if she hasn't got a baby? Borrow one from the neighbors. Now, go on. Get going. Come on. Nice night. Lots of stars, aren't they? Big moon, too. Did they have a moon as big as that back in Northbrook? You're not very subtle, Mr. Casey. Why don't you come right out and tell me not to get conceited because I was lucky enough to get that picture today? Why don't you tell me you still think I'm just a hick reporter who's fair game for practical jokes at the hands of big-time journalists? Who set off that skyrocket? Did I say anything like that? No, but you intimated it when you made that crack about Northville. <laughs> Lady, you amaze me. I make a simple little statement, and all of a sudden it turns out I've insulted you and your family for three generations back. Come on, let's be friends. Why should we be friends? Oh, because you got pretty hair. Blue eyes, red lips, and a gosh awful temper that's bubbling all over the place right now. Besides that, I like you. Do you? Sure. And to prove it, I'm inviting you to the Press Club Masquerade tomorrow night. Well, thanks. But you see, Mr. Blaine has already asked me. Blaine? <laughs> that's one way to get ahead. What do you mean by that? You're pretty good at putting words in my mouth. Figure it out. I already have, and I think you're the most hateful man I ever met. Wait till you get a good load of that blame. Hello, Casey. Where are you going? I'm going up to interview Mrs. Murdy's. Where have you been? I've been up interviewing Mrs. Murdy's. You better keep your mitts up. She isn't any too friendly to the press. Don't worry about me. Wild women eat out of my hand. Maybe so, but you better be careful. I'm not worried. I'm going to let you go in first. Good evening, Mrs. Murdy's. Well, what do you want, fish face? I'm from the police department. Oh, no, you don't say. You can't get in here. Well, we're in. Now, don't be frightened, Mrs. Murdy's. I'm only going to ask you a few questions. Well, I'm not frightened. And I ain't going to answer any questions. And guess why? Why? Because you're not a cop. Show me your badge. Um. A press badge. I knew you were a reporter. You had that dumb look. A reporter? So you lied to me. I only met him on the stairs. He said he could get me in to see you because he was a copper. He's a liar, all right. Throw him out. Watch me. Hey, what's the idea here? Now, now, don't make me lose my temper now. I'm a wildcat when I'm aroused. Ow! Hey, cool down! Quit it, you will you? Ready? I don't need any help. Hello, quit it! <laughs> all right, now, who are you? What a sweet can of tomatoes you turned out to be. So, you're a reporter too, huh? Oh, no. I'm a, I'm a representative of the, um... Well, I see you've been interviewing Mrs. Murdy's. Yeah. What are you doing back here? Oh, I called the city editor and told him what happened to me. You know what he said? Go back and tell that dame she can't intimidate me. <laughs> city editors have a lot of nerve at a mile and a half. What happened to the girl? Nothing. Yet. She's still up there. She's been up there a long time. Yeah. Say, if that tiger woman's found out she's a reporter... Something has happened. I guess we better call the cops. She's probably choking the life out of her. Drink to me only with thine eye, and I will pledge with mine. That was 
very nice. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard the song sung quite like that. Well, wait till you hear me sing this. <laughs> You'll let her throw you out on your ear, eh? Can I help it if I can't hit a woman? Why can't you hit a woman? Because I'm a gentleman. Anyway, she hit me first. <laughs> so that's what a gentleman looks like. Well, because you're a sissy, you let a girl reporter scoop you. Fine stuff. She didn't scoop me. She double-crossed me. But I'll get even. I'll find her doll buggy and take all the wheels off. I'll put sand in her powder puff. I'll rip runs in her silk stockings. What I'll... are you talking about? Who? Me? Here comes my pal. Casey. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I want to explain about... Now, wait a minute. Never explain anything. If you pull a dirty trick or double-cross a pal, don't make alibis. Just grin and rub it in. You make lots of friends that way. Well, what have you got? Well, I was with her two hours. Hold it. Don't spill it here. It might be a red-hot news story, and the shock would kill poor old Casey. As a matter of fact, a real news story would shock the whole doggone staff into being half awake. Come to my private office. Come on, come on. What have you got? I convinced Mrs. Murdy's that I was a booking agent and that I could arrange a three weeks vaudeville run for her on account of her publicity as Murdy's widow and I... I wouldn't care if you told her you could get her in the circus. All I want to know is what if you found out? Did she confess? Get any idea on who killed her old man? No. You didn't? No. You see, she thought I really could get her on the stage and all she wanted to do was sing for me. When I tried to talk to her about the murder, she got suspicious. Do you mean to tell me you didn't even get a hint on who killed Murdy's? Not even a picture of her and Murdy's in bathing suits? I'm sorry, no. I got an idea. What? You write a human interest story on Mrs. Murdy's. We'll call it, uh, My Day with a uh, Racketeer's Mall and sign your name to it. I'll write the lead story. You mean I could really write an important story at last? Yeah, and won't Casey burn? Mm-hmm. Oh, and, uh, speaking of Casey, you aren't going to masquerade with him, are you? No. I told him I was going with you. Swell. If it weren't almost press time, I'd tell you something about your eyes. But come on, we got a paper to get out. And then Mrs. Murdy showed me her wedding ring. Made quite an impression on you, didn't it? Well, she... Looks like the girl's falling for the boss. It's possible. Police moved a step nearer an arrest in the Eldridge case today. Through information supplied by the Star, the identity of the mysterious man who was to have accompanied Liquor Commissioner Elridge to his meeting with Inspector Matson became known. Elridge was killed as he waited for that man. With him lies the key to the whole tangled maze of vice. Ruth Nolan didn't write this story. Well, I wrote the lead. But it isn't true. It might be. Who knows? Maybe Elridge was waiting for a racketeer who was going to squeal. Don't you know this fake story of yours puts two women on the spot? Who? Ruth and Mrs. Murdy's. The gang will think Mrs. Murdy's tipped Ruth off to the squealer, and they'll be after both of them to shut them up. Oh, think nothing of it, Casey. The gang will know that story's a phony, and they won't pay any attention to it. And in the meantime, we've got an exclusive yarn. And I'll bet that old goat over at the bulletin so mad he's eaten half the Sunday edition. Yeah, but you're forgetting Mrs. Murdy's. What if that female wildcat comes after Ruth for making a sap out of her? Well, Ruth's no gentleman. Maybe she'll hit back. Anyway, you're getting kind of excited about a girl you're sore at, aren't you? Oh, I'm not sore anymore. Besides, I... Am I interrupting anything? No, I was telling Blaine there's just two kinds of newspapers. What are they? Honest ones and the kind he runs. Run over 
by a printing press. <laughs> Hello, Fanny. Hello, Casey. Shall we sit down? Allow me. <laughs> a look. Now, what in the world are you supposed to be? An old-time reporter. Well, well, if it isn't Casey wearing his other suit. Yeah, one of the boys from the other paper just asked me when I got the raise. <laughs> hey, waiter. Four dry martinis. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like this is going to be a big night. Crowded, you mean? <laughs> that guy's my city editor, but he should be playing bit parts in a comic strip. <laughs> Oh, and this is Miss Ruth Nolan. She's always got something up her sleeve, her arm and a knife. Thank you, Mr. Casey. And your friend? Oh, yeah, this is Madam W. Madam W? Mm-hmm, she used to be Madam X, but she got promoted. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's hoping you find a good table, Casey. What's the matter? Don't mm. you like this one? Don't have to worry anymore, Ruth. About what? About being a social success. I'm going to dance with you. Madam, I'll leave you with Mr. Blaine, but keep the table between you and don't try to read his mind. The blush might set that mask aflame. <laughs> Rat. This is a dirty trick on Mr. Blaine. He brought me here, you know. Well, keep quiet about it. Maybe nobody will notice. <laughs> It won't do your reputation any good, but anyway, Blaine got a break when you came with him. Don't you think I deserve a break? You consider it a break, dancing with me? Sure. It's a break for both of us. Hey, yeah, why didn't you park that truck outside? <laughs> Let's tell him, huh? <laughs> no, you can't be one of Casey's girls. They all have red elbows from leaning on bars. Just who are you? Oh, so you won't talk, eh? A mystery woman. Well, I love mysteries. And while I'm trying to solve you, shall we dance? Mr. Blaine seems to be getting along very nicely. Yeah, it looks as if someone else is gonna get her picture in the papers. Mm. Are you jealous? Of course not. Hmm. Well, you turned me down to come here with him. There must be a reason. <laughs> must there be some terrific reason when the illustrious Mr. Casey is turned down for a city editor? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. He is city editor, isn't he? I remember. Is a city editor supposed to have smallpox or something? You want to get ahead in the newspaper game very badly, don't you? Oh, I was just teasing you. But now that you seem determined to insult me, you can think what you like. Thanks. Maybe you're right, too. Mm -hmm. Wanted on the phone. Who, me? Yes. Who is it? Bye. Bye. Say, how would you like to have your picture in the paper? <laughs> oh, you've heard that before. Many times, Mr. Blaine. I seem to remember that voice. My wife, in a wig. You mean your ex-wife in a wig. Is something wrong? I've been flirting with my ex-wife, you double-crosser. <laughs> if it ever gets out, I'm ruined. I'll keep quiet for a $10 raise. Here, you dance with alimony, Lil. You brought her here. Uh, where's Ruth? She was called to the telephone. May I have the pleasure of this dance, Mrs. Blaine? With the greatest of pleasure, Mr. Casey. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? Operator, there was a call for Ruth Nolan. Operator, will you trace that call? It might be important. Was that you that screamed? Why, what happened? Someone dressed like a woman grabbed me. 
Well, I'm sure it was a man. Oh, it was probably some practical joker or some souse trying to be funny. Everything's all right. Maybe you're right, but all that faith. <laughs> he said, I think you were a beauty <laughs> My, what a charming scene. Yeah, it looks like Miss Nolan has a new assignment. Uh, Miss Nolan was uh, uh, frightened. Before or after the embrace? After. I mean before. Yeah. I'm sorry we busted in on your little promotion, Ruth. Mr. Casey's being very subtle, Mr. Blaine. Take me home, will you? Say, what were you doing here, anyway? Uh, we were going to phone for a cab. Mr. Casey's taking me home. Well, it's all right for you to go home in a cab. But don't you pay that guy's freight out of my alimony. It'll only be one fair. I'm going to ride on her lap. <laughs> Good boy, Casey. I didn't get much chance to talk with you tonight, Ruth. What with Casey butting in and all. I don't think Mr. Casey had a very satisfactory evening either. You're not getting soft on Casey, are you? Of course not. I hate him. Oh, I was afraid of that. Of what? Whenever a pretty girl gets sparks in her eyes and a throb in her voice and says, I hate him, I can hear not far in the distance wedding bells. I can smell orange blossoms. Well, you're wrong this time. I mean it. Well, that's a good idea anyway. You know, Casey's a very good friend of mine. I love him like a brother. But I must warn you, he's a rat. You can't trust him. He spends all of his time going around breaking hearts. Just a typewriter pounding Casanova in a baggy suit. Well, let's not talk about him anymore. All right. Let's talk about something interesting. Let's talk about me. I'm crazy about you. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Blaine. Oh, well, now, Ruth, wait a minute, please. Ruth, I meant what I said. I'm crazy about you. Ah! Get him out of here. I told you that fake story had caused trouble. Mrs. Murdy's gone. So what? Oh. Where's Blaine? He hasn't showed up yet. He's probably feeding aspirin to his hangover. Yes. Who'd you say was gone? The Murdy thing. Where's Ruth Nolan? She hasn't shown up either. She and Blaine left together last night. Maybe they're together now. Who knows? What do you mean by that crack? Well, they uh, seemed pretty chummy last evening. Maybe they uh, eloped. Yeah, and maybe you better take your mind out for an airing. I'm going to call Ruth up. You better call Blaine. Give me West Main 306 well, Burberry, 11320. 25. No soap. She doesn't answer either. Now, what do you gather from that? The city editor isn't home. The beautiful girl reporter isn't home. Somewhere, it seems, hands are being held. Yeah, and it seems you've made a long-running broad jump into the wrong conclusion. I'm going up to Ruth's apartment. You better not before you enter, Casey. Ruth. Ruth. Hey, anybody home? I want to speak with Captain Matson. Hello, Matson. Oh, hello, Casey. What's biting you? Disappeared. Blaine and the girl? Well, why do you ask me to butt in? I've been in love myself. <laughs> and the scarf has a funny smell, like an anesthetic. Well, maybe it's been to the cleaners. Oh, now wait, Casey, don't get sore. I'd be perfectly willing to get excited and steam on down there if I thought there was anything wrong. But you can't expect to disrupt the police department every time some guy like Blaine gets romantic. What about Della Murdy's? She's missing, too. She was missing. We found her in a burlesque show down on Main Street. What? Yeah, doing a song and dance. Said some Daffy Dame put the stage idea into her head and then beat it. So she went ahead on her own. And boy, she's got what it takes. I've seen her. Listen, you foul-minded old goat. That doesn't explain what happened to Ruth Nolan or, or, or Blaine. Uh, what? <laughs> All right, go ahead, laugh. Never saw it before. I tried the McPherson costumes. Thanks. Get 
up, you rat. You're gonna get some awfully bad publicity out of this, Pete. Come here. Are you gonna tell me who the guy is that was set to snitch? I tell you, that story was a fake. I wrote it myself. Never believe what you read in the papers, Pete. But he doesn't know. Sit down and pipe down. Are you gonna talk? Come on, are you gonna talk? I tell you, that story of mine was a fake. We don't know who Eldridge was gonna meet. Can't you see he's telling the truth? Now, take my advice, Pete. You can't get away with it. Oh, yes, I can, and I'll tell you how. When the next train passes, I'm gonna shoot twice. Nobody will hear the shots. I'm gonna leave the gun here, and it'll be in your hand. Why, I can even write the headlines. Editor and reporter die in love pact. Listen, do you hear that train? When it gets here, I shoot. Now are you gonna talk? We can't, we don't know anything. McPherson from the Quality Masquerade Costume yeah. Company. We rented you a costume and it uh, hasn't been returned. Yeah, I know. I'll bring it back later. But but you only rented it for one day. Uh, I want the costume. Oh, all right. Hey, Butch, get that costume. Okay. If it's damaged, you'll have to pay extra. Yeah, yeah, I know. Here I'll it tell. is. Yeah. Wait, where's the mask? Oh, we lost it. Uh, yeah, take it out of this. It'll cover everything. Keep oh, the change. Thank you. Hold still, you two. Don't move. Casey, you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Boy, am I scared. Get the guns and let's clear out of here. Just a minute. Stay where you are. Drop that gun. Why didn't you pull those blinds, you dummies? Gleason. <laughs> Nobody else. But you wouldn't put my name in the paper, would you? You bet I wouldn't. I'm no squealer. <laughs> Think we can trust him, Pete? Oh, sure. About as far as you can throw a trainload of pig iron. Listen, sap. We changed the plot. You were in love with her and you were jealous. So you popped in and killed him and her and then committed suicide. When the next train passes, there's gonna be some shooting, only nobody will hear it. What would an old-time reporter do in a case like this? I'll think of something in a minute. Yeah. Now let's talk this over sensibly. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you want to know? The name of the man who was going to squeal to Eldridge. But I tell you, there isn't any such man. Uh -uh. I'll tell. I know who the squealer is. All right, talk fast. You know, you know, the guy that was with you that day. That guy over on the other side of town, you know him, Gleason. The fellow over there with you that time, he always wears a raincoat, e even when the sun's shining. What guy? Who are you talking about? That guy over there in that gambling joint. His name's uh, Pete. No, not you. No, no. Uh, George. George. Uh, uh, no, Hank. Hank, that's his name. He, he's over there, and he always wears a green eye shade. What like that. guy with what green eye shade? Over in that gambling joint, you remember? And you came in, and he came in, and then he went back and put... This guy in. stole oh, I'm... I'll never argue with you about a tip again, Casey. Boy, what a haul. And all because of a mask. Uh, here, cut it out. Hey, we got a paper to get out. Thanks, boys. You're gonna get your picture in the paper, sweetheart. Hello, dear. Oh, it's you. Now, look, I've been through enough. Why don't you cut out this alimony racket? It'd be better to marry you again than to keep on paying you. I've been waiting for you to say that, Bill. Then why all the threats of jail? The only way I could keep you from chasing every woman you saw was to keep you broke. So I did. And I saved all the money in your name. Say, where have you two been? Don't you know we've got a paper to get out? We had to go down to police court. Well, what happened? Well, it, it's all kind of confusing. 
First, the judge said, Osro McWilliger, I sentence you to 30 days in jail for being drunk and disorderly. And then he said, Matt Casey and Ruth Nolan, I sentence... No, he, he didn't say that. He said, Matt Casey and Ruth Nolan, I... Pronounce you man and wife. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Am I fired?